Okay, the technology is working again. Uh, Professor Kotsarev, please, the floor is yours. Okay, I would like to thank Boris for organizing this nice conference. Uh, I'll start with uh, an article which was just published uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in the MIT Technology Review. The editors of the MIT Technology Reviews announced 50 smartest company for, the, for this year, actually. And all these companies were grouped or clustered into several actually six industries. What was striking for me is the fact that there's an industry now which is called connectivity, how actually the whole thing has changed recently, and now connectivity is a one of the industrial sectors. The other thing which I would like to stress here is that the fact that two industries, connectivity and intelligent machines, the companies which belong to these two industries are half of these 50 smartest companies, and both of these industries are connected with our workshop. So this is just I wanted to, to present a wider perspective of where we are, basically. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, the, talk, my talk is, the title of my talk is Collaborative Ensemble Learning. And because of that, I'll try to explain first and to say a little bit about collaboration, then ensemble, then a learning. Then I will talk about our novel concept, which we call it collaborative ensemble learning. And I will present it two examples, actually two ensemble methods or ensemble learning uh, methods, one for classifiers and then another for aggressors. Uh, we heard yesterday from many, actually, talks that there were many talks about collaboration, so I will continue in this direction, basically. What we are trying here to achieve is to achieve collaboration between classifiers, with, between weak learners, between models, basically. But before starting to talk about collaboration, I'll just mention something which is slightly different than collaboration, this is cooperation. So collaboration means uh, collective, collective problem solving. It refers to the agent model, uh, agents which work together on a single shared goal. On the other hand, and we'll see a couple of examples in a minute. On the other hand, cooperation is related to agents which perform together while working on a selfish yet common goals. Uh, both of these topics, collaboration and cooperation, have been around for a while, and as, as I will show you, basically, the question how did co cooperative behavior evolve uh, has been around since the time of Darwin and his book on uh, origin of species. But nevertheless, and many mathematicians, physicists, and uh, uh, scientists, biologists have worked, has, ha, have tried to answer this question, but nevertheless, the Journal of Science identify this question as a, one of the top 25 challenges which we should try to face in the next uh, couple of years, in the next 25 years, actually. Uh, as I said, many scientists have worked on this question and on another question, but also recently, uh, machine learning community has started to, to, to be interested in this, question, in this question. So what, how did cooperative behavior evolve? What is the emergence of cooperation? What are the basic principles behind the cooperation? DeepMind, the, the company which is behind uh, AlphaGo, actually started this year to work on the deep multi-agent reinforcement learning models in order to understand emergence of cooperation. Uh, we had, uh, yesterday we heard a, quite of, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, basically, uh, talks regarding collaboration, and I'll, I'll now continue to, to, to in this direction. So my idea now is to, to give you an overview, just a very bright overview of collaboration, 
of what, is, what are the ensembles, and then on, on, on learning from the machine learning uh, community perspective. Uh, this is a collaborative problem solving. In the next slide, we'll see actually that there's a lot of the, some of the papers which are related to collaboration have been published for has have been published for quite a long a long time. Uh, the last decade, this was also very uh, the problem of collaboration was related to uh, distributed problem solving, which is now we, we know yesterday from the talk of Pre Peja that this is this we could say that this is a, a kind of crowdsourcing or is the de definition of crowdsourcing. Uh, oh, this has been also a, a lot of companies have been working on, uh, on, on, on the problems related to crowdsourcing. One of the company, this is a startup in, in, in Stanford, work on the issues related uh, or collaboration with learning, basically. Uh, collaboration also means, in some sense, uh, wisdom of, of the crowd, and then I'll mention a couple of papers which are related to this more, the concept of collaboration of the wisdom of crowd. So I, I just want to say that, that this presentation was, I sent it to Boris uh, a week ago, so basically, so this, I realized that, that some of the papers uh, overlap with, with somebody who said it didn't change anything from yesterday, basically, from your talks yesterday. So the, the, uh, one of the first papers which are related to, to collaboration in more general sense, this is the uh, Condorcet very important, uh, very known theorem of uh, the, uh, Jury's theorem. And I will read this, this sentence here in a slightly different way, basically. Assuming that if we have a, if each of the, of the classifier, assuming that we have a binary classifier, can predict or can, can, uh, can classify data with just slightly, with the probability just slightly over 0.5, so that with the probability slightly above guessing, and we, if we add more of this, so this is what is called weak classifier or weak learner, learner. and we, if we, we add these more voters here, originally this was in the terms of voters, more learners or more classifiers, then this will increase the probability or we, we could probably end up with a, we will end up with a stronger le learner with a classifier in which probability approaches zero, or approaches one, uh, or is very close to, to one, which is something which is strong class, uh, classifier or learner or a model, whatever you want. Uh, I will connect this to, to this paper in a second, but before that, I would like to stress this is a nice paper published in, nine, uh, in the beginning of the, on the, of the last century, uh, very important paper, Galton, with the, ta with the title Vox Populi, Populi, and these are the uh, quotes from that paper. And we saw that this, this paper, uh, these quotes also, these numbers in the page of pres presentation, I'll skip this. How, from weak learners, how you can generate the ensemble, how you can generate weak learners, and how then you can fu fuse them into a strong classifier is not an easy question. And this, one, uh, this was answered recently in this paper in which the technique which was called boosting was suggested in order to uh, generate a strong classifier from, a com from a uh, weak learners, from weak classifiers. Uh, this paper led to the, something which probably you know, the algorithm which is called Ada, Ada Boost, and uh, the whole area of boosting is now quite a uh, hot area in the machine learning. Ada Boost, or the authors of this algorithm, this is one of the most popular algorithm in, in algorithms in machine learning. Uh, the authors won the Gödel, Gödel Prize in 2003, one of the most prestigious prizes in machine learning. In machine learning. Uh, uh, now the question, as I said, my title is Collaborative Ensemble Learning. I will not talk too much about ensembles, but nevertheless, I would like to, 
to say a few words why you should study ensemble. And this is again in connection with, with, with the Condorcet theorem, this one. And again, I would like to stress the importance of the study ensemble. In machine learning, what we do basically, it's a very simple thing, we, assume, we, 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 we have unknown true function and we, we would like to model. This f hat is a call model or predictor or what different names, learner, whatever we, 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 we say it predictor. And then what we want is to approximate this function. The quality of the approximation is usually, there's a different definition, but is given by what is no, uh, the notion of generalization error, which is typically defined in this way. This is the mean square error, very basic stuff in machine learning, so you can uh, read in any uh, books in machine, in ma on machine learning, basically. Now, how this, what happens if we, instead of one predictor, we have a ensemble of predictors. This is the question I would like to answer, and this question is, a, the answer is actually very simple, and it's provided on the next slide. So assuming that, that the prediction of the ensemble is a weighted sum of individual predictors. So that's, this is one, then the error for a single example is given by this one. So comparing to these, actually we have, for this equation here, we have now Additional term, this one. And this terms, term actually makes the whole difference. This expression shows explicitly that the ensemble generalization error is less than or equal to the generalization error of a randomly selected single predictor. Why? Because this term here is always non-negative. So that's a very simple but very powerful ex explanation which is related even to the Condorcet, theo Condorcet theorem and the work, which was, uh, the work which was previously mentioned. Uh, we can do a, do a little bit more, actually. This is also well known in any textbook in, 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 on machine learning. We can write bias variance decomposition or trade-off for the uh, mean square error, for the generalization, generalization error. Uh, for in the case of ensemble, this uh, is slightly, in this case, uh, we come up with something which is slightly different. We have actually bias variance, covariance, decomposition or trade-off. And it can be shown that to mass, uh, it's not possible to maximize the, this one, this component here, so the the, this component here, and, 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 the, and to, to minimize the bias component simultaneously. So that's, there's a lot of work on this one, how to maximize, to minimize, uh, minimize and so on and so forth. I will not go to, into details, but the, the problems are obvious. Uh, the, the next uh, term which I should try to explain from a different point of view is a learning, uh, my, what I would, uh, or in the more general say, is learnability and generalization. Um, in, in, st in statistical learning theory, probably the most fundamental concepts are learnability and generalization. The first one is related to what is called excess risk, why uh, within the hypothesis of space, hypothesis space, while generalization error is concerned with estimating the true risk. Informally, so just informally, we say that the learning algorithm generalizes if given access to some training set from the underlying data distribution, it returns, uh, it returns a hypothesis whose empirical error is close to the true error. On the training data is close to the true error on the underlying distribution. Uh, nevertheless, the, the whole notion of, of generalization, although it's the, the most, one of the basic, most fundamental concept, is a brittle and there's a lot of actually many different notions of, uh, of, of, of generalization and a lot of work recently done on that, that one. Uh, one of the main, uh, main issue, main, main point which in, uh, in machine learning is to address or to find generalization bounds. 
And this can be done in a several ways, basically. And uh, this, or how to prove generalization, generally it depends in what, how you, you are trying to answer this problem. So in a very general set, settings, the inference pro process is, is influenced by three key factors. The, da the data, so this is the nature of the observation space, the nature of the hypothesis, hypothesis space, and the details of the learning algorith algorithm. So imposing different constraints, imposing different conditions, actually, we can come up with different generalization bounds. For example, if you try to uh, assume some assumption on the on, on H, on the hypothesis space, then you can derive, this is what Vapnik and Chernovensky have uh, has theory derives, using this VC theory, you can actually derive some de generalization bounds. What we have done in our work is actually trying to do this using uh, algorithmic stability. In other words, uh, assuming some constraint on the learning algorithm, we were able to prove some theorems regarding our method, and I will discuss in the second. But nevertheless, this is what I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say. There's a couple of different techniques which could be used for analyzing generalization or for proving uh, bounds of generalization error. What we have done is using the stability theory. Uh, algorithmic stability is a notion which has probably appeared for the first time in the, in the work of Tikhonov. Then it means that a machine learning algorithm performs, so it describes how a machine learning algorithm performs to small changes in the training data. This has been also a topic which is very hot recently, uh, and I would like to mention, I don't want to, to to, present, to give a state of the art of this, the whole subject, because it's, a, uh, it's a out, out of scope of, of, of my presentation. I don't want to bother you with that one. But if you are interested, I could send, uh, you can just email me, I can send uh, papers which are state of the art in this direction. Uh, I, I would like to mention two papers here. The first, in, in the first paper, the notion of infor, uh, uniform stability has been introduced, and the authors have shown that this is a sufficient condition for learnability. In addition, they have shown that some of the popular algorithms, including SVM, are also, uh, could satisfy this condition for uniform, uh, uh, satisfy this condition of uniform stability. Schalaf and Schwartz identify stability as the Key, a key necessary and sufficient condition for learnability. In general, as I said, the algorithmic stability is a topic which has been connected to different, uh, has been connected to, to different notions, notion of differential privacy, uh, different notion of generalization, adaptive data analysis, adaptive learning, and compression uh, schemes. Uh, differential privacy is a term which I think, if I remember correctly, was uh, first uh, uh, suggested by a, by a professor, Cynthia Dwork, and, uh, and she also suggested a notion of fair algorithmic fairness, and this is what uh, we have talked yesterday, many of, of, of speakers actually talk about the fairness of the algorithm. Uh, so what I'm just uh, would like to, to, to mention is that actually all this uh, notion of al fairness of the algorithm, differential privacy, uh, different notion, uh, robust generalization, strong generalization, and so, so forth, actually are somehow related to each other. Uh, Cynthia Dwork, I, if I remember correctly, got for another paper, Gödel Prize for this year, to, to 2007, for this year. Uh, now, I, since, I have, since I have covered the whole topic, basically, now I, I could... Sorry about this. Uh, I could say what we have done so far. So, I said a, uh, I said a few words 
I covered a little bit collabor what collaboration is, I said why we should study ensembles, and then I describe a little bit, a little bit in the context of machine learning what learnability is and generalization is. Uh, what we are suggesting here is uh, something which we call collaborative ensemble learning. This is, we propose actually as an ensemble which is by combining, which is uh, built by combining, begging, so bootstrap aggregating and boosting. I'll, uh, I'll show you in a minute what, what begging and boosting is actually in the, on the next slide, but this is not not only that one, then this scheme is, enha is enhanced by introducing collaboration between the, uh, the elements of the learners. So here we have the elements of the, of the ensemble, basically. How we did this, so this is stability-guided scheme. Actually, we use algorithmic stability uh, as a tool, as a guide uh, for the collaboration between the Constitute element, constitutive element of the of the ensemble. So it's not, we didn't we didn't uh, uh, force collaboration by chance, but instead of that, we use algorithmic stability as reverse engineering. So actually, we built, uh, we we prove that by using uh, by enhance by uh, by uh, collaborating among the the learners between the learners. Uh, generalization error is reduced or uh, more uh, lower and tighter bounds are obtained. This, then this scheme has been uh, uh, proposed for two collaborative ensemble uh, learning models uh, have been proposed, one for binary classification and one for structured regression. The first one is, uh, is a paper which appeared just appeared this year, and the second one is a something in, in preparation. Actually, it's already finished, and we sent it to NIPS for this year. We'll see what will happen. What is interesting here is actually the, uh, one of my students came just, uh, last year on, on the, the very same conferences, Martin, and he met Zoran, and now he's working with, with Zoran in the US, in Philadelphia. So how this, how, uh, this is our first collaboration, actually, with my first collaboration with, with Obradovich. Uh, okay, what, what uh, I start to explain now, uh, the first, I, I'll, I'll explain the, the first of oh, this paper. You can find the details, I will not go into details, and all the proofs in this paper. This is a 50 pages paper, so I'll, I'll not go into details, and I just also, sh some, uh, some of these uh, exp give uh, a, brief in, in, a brief introduction of, of, in this paper and the results. Of course, I will show you the results of this. But first, I will start to discuss this uh, binary classification, collaborative ensemble learning model for binary classification. Uh, okay, maybe I'll, I'll skip this because then I'll show you the, the picture and it will, uh, will it will be clear from the picture how we did this. So this is one strong classifier, well, one strong classifier. This is the data set, and with the begging, we actually produce, this is a standard technique in machine learning, we produce several of, of data sets, a standard technique, I, I, as, I, as I said, and this is the boosting algorithm. So it boosting, it goes this way, and then this is the first weak learner, the second, and then we have T weak learners, in one stroke learning, in one boosting algorithm. So this is the, how it, now this, one of these is combined, sorry, is combined in the scheme which can be represented in this way, can be shown, drawn in this way. So this is the, so one, this here block is actually what I have shown you here. Uh, now, we consider two different types of collaboration within the weak learners, so this is why we call it weak collaboration. So this is W here, just to stress that we have exchange 
uh, instances between weak learners. And now this is the, we have uh, the number of this is, I think S is here. So it, we have uh, data, training data, then we have weak learners inside. This is a strong learner, one, two, and then the S strong learner. Another, another uh, scheme which we suggested is a collaboration between the strong learners here. So the previous one was the collaboration between the weak learners, and here what we have is a collaboration between strong learners. Uh, so the, to the total number of, of, of weak learners, of course, is in each of, the, of these we have, uh, in each of strong learners we have T number of the weak learners and we have S strong learners, so in the total we have S uh, times T uh, weak learners. As I said, I will not write any equations and any mat mathematical description. This is uh, what is proven or what the main conclusions before discussing actually the, the result. Uh, both of these approaches employ collaboration for increasing the mean margin. Boosting is a margin maximization process that accounts for the phenomenon of generalization error reduction. This is what I have said. I said several times. How we prove this, actually, we, we, you can now find proofs that our collaboration strategy give uh, lower and tighter upper bounds for the generalization error, and we use uh, uh, algorithmic stability for that one. As I already said, say, said, algorithmic stability has been utilized as reverse engineering to guide how to do the collaboration. Simply say to, to guide how to collaborate, how to exchange instances, to, how instances to exchange in order to improve the overall stability and to reduce generalization error. Now the, the results, numerical results. We tested the algorithm on nine public, publicly available data sets. These are the sets. You can find all the, the description of the algorithms, the proofs in the paper which I have just shown. And the results now, I will not, I, I, I will skip this one. The, minimi, the, the minimal generalization errors are summarized in the, in the next table. The error uh, decreases in the table two, and then also uh, the table three shows the number of, collab uh, of perspective collaborations between the model entities. They were successful, are shown in the table three. And these are the, the results. So this is the minim minimal generalization error rates in percent. These are the data sets, sub-bagging, we are comparing to the sub-bagging, gentle blues, and these are our two methods we have just suggested, weak and strong. Uh, the same, uh, the, we can also uh, show this in percentage. So this is the minimal decrease of minimal generalization error by weak and strong with respect to sub-bagging and general boost respectively, and these are the numbers what we, get, we, we, got, we get. Finally, table three, the total number of uh, collaborations, successful collaboration in weak and strong uh, uh, models of our collaborative learning ensemble until the minimal generalization error has been reached. And these are the number, you see this, uh, these, these are the numbers. Uh, we have also tested or evaluated algorithm, our algori both of the algorithms, on the data which uh, we found in this paper on the method on the uh, learning machine learning algorithms which were used also or used in this paper. So we compared what we have done with all these machine different machine learning algorithms. So exactly with all of them. Our algorithms show both, actually, uh, so surpassing performance of, approxi of approximately 0977 compared to 09574 or less. So this is the best of one. I don't remember what was the best one of these techniques of one of these machine learning gave the highest uh, AUROC curve comparing to, um, but nevertheless, what we have shown, uh, with, we, what we obtain 
was much, it was greater than this number, larger than this number. Uh, summarize, uh, summing up the, this part of, the, of my talk, of the, the, the first part of my talk, uh, I could say that, uh, that I could uh, conclude that while both methods achieve similar performance, and we can see that these are indeed the case, because what, what we have here, comparing weak and strong actually are very similar numbers, more or less. Uh, uh, they follow a dramatically different approach. As I said, this employs collaboration week during bo bo boosting, so in other, in other words, among uh, weak learners, while strong collaboration requires prediction ready boosters conda con to conduct it. In other words, collaboration is done between strong learners. WIC is more flexible and scalable approach in time critical scenarios. Uh, this is also, it can be decoupled and in, in time making it highly scalable. The case, in, the, in this case, only two boosters const constituting a collaboration pair can be decoupled in time, so making it less scalable, unfortunately. The fact that each pair of boosters is uh, retaining uh, right, uh, right after the collaborate makes this approach, however, uh, more safer, uh, approach safer or one when time is not critical. But this is very fast, and in the paper, actually, you can even find time complexity, discussion for the time complexity for the both, both algorithms. Now, uh, collaborative ensemble regressors. What we have done so far, what I have explained to you actually is a collaboration between uh, classifiers. What we use, I didn't mention this, was we use gentle, uh, uh, gentle boost, a variant of the other books. What here we are doing, actually, very similar thing, but instead of using classifier, we will use as a basic building block of our ensembles, Gaussian conditional random fill. So what we are doing, actually, we are combining begging and boosting with the Gaussian, Gando, uh, Gauss, uh, Gaussian conditional random field models, model, and then up, allowing also the collaboration between these in a fashion that decreases an objective function then bala uh, that balances between underfitting and overfitting. Uh, Again, we have, uh, in, the, in the full version of the paper, there's a theorem which, which we have proved. Uh, the, main, the main contribution could be summarized as this. We introduce an objective function that addresses the trade-off between underfitting and overfitting, the, the well-known problem in machine learning. The concept of statist statistical independence was utilized to control stability to the notion of distance correlation and collaborative ensemble regression was developed with, which exploits a global example uh, exchange, uh, exchange optimization to attain its objective. So again, we use collaborative, we actually develop collaboration between the Gaussian conditional random fields in order to improve the uh, uh, pred prediction, basically, in order to improve the, uh, the, uh, the work of the model. The model has been tested for, uh, for, uh, in compared for a broad range of traditional and structured regression, regression models, and I will show you the, the, the result in a second, basically. Uh, on average, the, in, the, 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 the mean square error were decrease on average between 21% to 67%. Again, as I would like to stress, compare against a broad range of other traditional and structured regression models. What we have done, what we, 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 so we took this data set, this is the data set which was borrowed or uh, taken from the paper of Jura Leskowitz and Stefan Boyd. They, they, uh, they, they, uh, they develop a method which they called network uh, lasso, and then we compare n not only to uh, their method, but also to, to some other machine learning models of regression. As I said, tr structure, uh, 
unstructural as well as structured model of regression. The, the final table show the result. So this is all these, these models were tested. So it's coming from linear regression and so support vector machine and so on and so forth. No, network Lasso, this is the work of, of Jure and Boyd and Stefan. Uh, unstructured, structural, at, at the end we have our method. We can see that it improves comparing to all of, all of them. It improves the, the uh, MS, MSE. It improves the mean square error, which was he obtained average of 10 random splits. In, uh, to summarize, to sum up this, the, the, the second part of my talk, we introduced collaborative ensemble regressor. This is the model in which uh, we combine begging, boosting, and Gaussian conditional random field. Uh, we, use, we use concept uh, uh, mutual stability and statistical independence, and then uh, use stability uh, techniques in order to derive upper bound of the true risk in order to yield higher gen uh, generalization performance. So again, uh, we, 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 we back up all this work numerical with a strong theoretical foundation that these, the, the, uh, again, this is the uh, stability guided collaboration. is not collaboration by chance, but that this is a stability guided collaboration. Conclusion, I'll, this is my, uh, all, I'm also almost at the end. What we have developed is a, something, a new concept which we call collabor collaborative ensemble learning. Uh, so it means that we, we will develop techniques in which, or technique in which uh, we allow collaboration between the members of the ensemble. This has been applied in the binary classification and structured regress, uh, regression setting, in structured regression. And finally, what I would like to, to stress is that uh, if uh, paraphrasing uh, the, uh, the authors of the other booth who compare the general concept of boosting with generating wisdom from a council of fools, we could add that actually Collaborative fools could even generate more wisdom because in all our examples, we, were, were we, uh, we create more wisdom. Finally, uh, I would like to thank my students, collaborators, and sponsors, ONR and ONR Global. Thank you very much. So maybe I missed it, but uh, how exactly did you Im implement co collaboration? How is it, uh, what is the equation, or how does it work? I didn't see that part. Okay, or it's yeah. compli com complicated, it's in the paper? Or yeah, it's everything explained in the paper. At, at the level, it, we exchange the instances for the different weak learners. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, that's the, the g taking, in, taking into account the stability. So we, we were guided by the stability, and then uh, which end up in, at the end that the generalization error would uh, be less than what the, we, we what we got uh, is a tire, lower and tighter bounds of the generalization error. So everything was guided by the by the stability basically. So that's basically global information that is really guiding everything. But I, I thought there's some local. No, no, it's a lot. In inside it is. is a local. We, we, the, the weak learners collaborate between each other. So nothing is global. But, but how they did it is actually we are, we were using, OK, in that sense, it's a global. You're right. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. The, the final okay. number is yes, global. Yes, yes, yes. But based on that number, they Be, change. Yes, I then see. right. So well. that's what you call collaboration. I see. Okay. Collaboration of models, basically. So what I'm what I'm trying to do, actually, what we are trying to do is just to 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 try to to act to collaborate between the uh, weak classifiers, so weak learners, so weak regressors. 
basically. But there, there is an order there that you impose. Does it matter really? No. No, you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Okay, if no questions, then two thanks again to Professor Kocarev. Okay, so now it's time to close the conference. This is the easy part <laughs> because we have done all the jobs. So I want to thank again the invited lecturers for coming here to Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, so you made this event really great, and also to all the participants who made it all through the end. But I want also want to thank uh, our collaborators uh, who also made this all happen. Ljubčo Kocarev. Peđa, should I mention you, or is it top secret? <laughs> Peđa Neškovic, who actually pushed all of this. Pavlos Delias. Alexis Tsukias. These were the organizers who actually, without whose help this couldn't actually work. And of course, Sandro, you co uh, communicated with Sandro a lot. Petar, they were responsible for all the administration and everything. So um, it was um, a lot of work to do to organize such an event, but um, we are really happy. And we hope also that uh, you are happy uh, for this event. So thank you once again. and. Uh, Peja, we will next year, will you announce, will we continue <laughs> this strike, okay. Yeah, I would like to thank Boris for the hard work, okay. Can we ap applaud it? <laughs> okay, we are closed and that's it, thank you.